Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From now until June 17th, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a Modern Horizons booster box. Also, there is a way to enter the drawing when no purchase necessary. See the description below for the full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another day of Modern Horizons previews. Are you a fan of those two two for two bears? Well, this is going to be your day. Before we get into the cards, though, just a quick reminder, if you're looking for the sources of these previews, just check out the description below. They're all down there. Also, if you're still looking to pick up a Modern Horizons booster box, you can get one at FlipSideGaming.com. If you use that hero's promo code, it will cost you about $199.99. That will also go to support the channel. That's always appreciated. But without any further ado, let's get into it. Generous gift. We get some Kev Walker art here, which is pretty sweet. Now, this is a color-shifted version of Beast Within. Beast Within actually does see a little modern play. You'll find this in Living End decks and the sideboard, sometimes a Titan Shift and a few other decks too. Not necessarily extensive play, but enough to matter. There's a good chance that this version of the card will also see modern play in some decks. Beyond that, though, this is going to be fantastic for Commander. Basically, if you're going to be playing white in the future, you're going to want a copy of this card in your deck there. This will also be a good uncommon pickup in Drafter Sealed for you, too. Splicer Skill. This is a fun card. Splice onto Instant or Sorcery, not Splice onto Arcane. So look what they did here. They made a Splicer with Splice. There you have it. So basically, I do think this card is a little too mana intensive for Modern. But if you want to play a casual Splicer deck, this will fit right in there. Also a good card for Drafter Sealed, just simply because you can get a 3-3 token for 3. That alone is really good. And if you get to splice it onto an instant or sorcery here or there, you might be able to get two, maybe three of those tokens. That extra value could make a big difference. This is a Chinese simplified language preview, loosely translated worthy soldier. This is kind of fun if you remember Master Decoy because the ability and the arts, of course, are very reminiscent of that card. Now, I don't think this is consistent enough for modern, but in limited, this will be fantastic. Granted, you might not be able to activate the ability every turn when you want to, but you'll be able to activate it enough that it will matter. It also is a nice blocker in the early game. Bizarre Trade Mage. Okay, are you a fan of Arabian Nights? If so, you came to the right place. This card is oozing with nostalgia from that set. Very reminiscent of Flying Men, Bizarre Baghdad, Surrender Befreet. There's a lot of cool references in the flavor text as well. Let's cut to the chase, though. Is it a good card? Yeah, I actually think it is a good card. I would play this in Modern. Now, I don't know if there's enough room in the Phoenix deck or the Dredge deck for something like this. Modern doesn't necessarily need more push flyers, and they don't necessarily need more ways to populate the graveyard, but I do think it is cool to have both those things happening on one card. If you have maybe a graveyard-centric deck that wants another win condition, this gets interesting. Maybe isn't Hollow One, for example. Maybe you get Hollow One out because of the Bizarre activation, but even if you don't, seeing more cards and getting a 3-4 flyer for 3 doesn't feel bad in that deck build. So it could show up there. Maybe it could show up in some other places too. Who knows? Maybe this even sees a tab in a legacy play. I don't think that's out of the question. In limited, this is going to be a great rare for you if you're lucky enough to open it, obviously. Commander? Yeah, this will see some commander play as well. If you're thinking about tribal, human and wizard are both relevant creature types, so that's worth noting as well. Overall, really fun card here, but it also packs a punch. Changeling Outcast. Okay, this is an interesting one. It's a common, it seems like it should be pretty simple, but I actually have a lot to say about it. Very similar to Tormented Soul. And let's talk about where you might actually play this card. Legacy. There is an unblockable mono black deck out there. It's kind of a niche deck. A few people play it here or there. Sometimes it will get a decent result. Maybe this is one of the cards that could help push it a little further. But I do think this card gets a lot more interesting when you start using it with tribal synergies. Now, an example of that could be Modern. If a Sliver deck could get there, well, this is a way to have a card that is a very cheap Sliver that will get all the bonuses from your other Slivers, but is also unblockable. If you have a Sliver that's going to give an advantage for damage to an opponent like the one we saw yesterday, then perhaps this is an easy way to get advantage from that type of ability. Now, it doesn't have to be Slivers either. Maybe you're doing this with Goblins. Maybe you're doing it with Zombies. Perhaps you could carry this over into a Pauper build as well, because it is a common. Now let's talk Commander for a moment. Sure, you have all those tribal synergies going for you there too, but there's another card that could be fun to exploit with this, and that's Liliana's Contract. It's another option for a cheap demon for that strategy. 
Finally, in limited, this could be a good late pickup in a draft pack. It might not always make your cut, but if you have some tribal synergies or some ways to pump it, could be decent for you. Feast of Fools. Okay, let's get this out of the way. I don't really see it in modern. I think it's a little too board dependent. In draft or sealed, this is a very good uncommon. But you know what? Look at this art. Look at this flavor. And the art tells you exactly where to play the card. Commander Shadowborn Apostle deck. There you go. It did my job for me. Let's move on. Umazawa's Charm. All right, Tetsu Umazawa is back. And his card has options reminiscent of Umazawa's Jitte. That's a really cool callback. So what about the card itself? Is it any good? Actually, I don't think it's that bad for some formats. Maybe not modern. I don't know if it's doing enough there. But Commander, I would play this with Isochron Scepter. You're getting a lot of options when you trigger it. Also, Unlimited, this could be a nice little combat trick. Again, it gives you a variety of things you can do for just two mana. Here's the Red Force spell, Force of Rage. If it's not your turn this time, you may exile a red card from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. There's actually a lot of power behind this spell. Is it enough to see a lot of modern play? I'm not completely sold on that, but I don't want to ignore this card either. I want to test it out maybe in an aggressive build and just kind of see what it can do. First off, if someone's attacking in, you could surprise your opponent with this and maybe blow them out from time to time. Secondly, if you're head on board state and you want to try to slam the door in a game, you could do worse than this. I don't think it's the most amazing card I've ever seen when it comes to an aggressive card for modern, but I at least want to give it a chance. Now, outside of modern, there are things you can do with it. Commander, Bruticlad, for example, I would definitely throw it in that deck. Also, if you get this in limited, it's going to be very good in draft and sealed, again, just because of the power level here. Next is Goat Nap. This is kind of a callback to Goat Napper from Lorwyn. When it comes to limited, threaten effects are always good. This is going to be just fine for you in draft or sealed. And if you happen to target a goat, or in this case, most likely a changeling, you're going to get that bonus. Pyrophobia. Okay, I got to call out. Cowards can't block this turn. I love the flavor in this set. It's amazing. So a little bit of a call out to Baldwin Intimidator, of course. Now, the card itself is a very solid draft or seal card, probably a relatively high pick common. Two casting cost, sorcery speed, three damage to target creature. The cowards also could come into play because, remember, changelings are cowards. This could really punish your opponent for playing some changelings. Even if they're not, though, three damage to a creature in limited is going to be very good. Ravenous Giant. Here is a color shifted version of Jazam Jin. Jazam Jin is a very sought after, very expensive Arabian Nights reserve list card. But it's kind of funny when you look at what that creature does and compare it to today's creatures, it's not all that overwhelming. It's great in 9394, but in today's magic, it's not that great. Like this card is not going to see modern play, for example. But it's still a good limited card. It takes you ahead of the curve a little bit. Getting a 5-5 on turn 4, even if you take some damage off this, could be quite good in Drafter Sealed. Notice this is an uncommon. It's not a rare. It's not a mythic. A lot has changed with magic creatures over the years. Eula, Queen Among Bears. 2-2 two, two for 2. Of course, it had to be for a legendary bear. Here is your bear, Commander. It's finally happened. Whenever another bear enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Put two plus one plus one counters on target bear, which could be this, or maybe a different one. Or target bear you control fights target creature you don't control. We finally got there. There is a bear queen, and yes, this is going to be a card you're going to see at the commander table. Will the bear deck be amazing? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But a lot of people are going to play it because it's going to be fun, and that's what commander is all about. Does it see modern play? Probably not, but in limited, they did give us more bear, so if you do happen to open this as your rare, you do have things to do with it. You'll see a couple of those cards later. Aeola's Influence. This is kind of interesting. It's almost like a take on Seismic Assault, a bear-themed Seismic Assault, if you will, but for three green, you get this enchantment. It doesn't do anything on its own, but you can quickly discard a land, hopefully, to create a 2-2 green bear creature token. This is a rare, unfortunately, so I don't know how many opportunities you're going to get to play in Limited with this as well as the Bear Lord we just saw. But every once in a while, maybe it will work out. Regardless, though, this is a good draft or sealed card to turn late game lands into board presence as long as you can swing the three green in the casting cost. Commander, Bear Tribal, key card for you there. The only other thing I thought about this card, could I play this in Modern would say Life from the Loam? Is that good enough? Probably not, but it might be worth trying to brew. Genesis. Okay, this one's a reprint from Judgment. It also had a Judge promo at one point. The Judgment card is not necessarily cheap. It'll run you about $6, $7. The foil about $14, 15 
the Judge promo around 9.10. This also got some brand new art. So is this something that's going to play a big role in Modern? I don't really think so. I think maybe a deck might run one or two of here or there. The issue is this is only good in the graveyard. If you can get it in the graveyard consistently, it could be decent in certain builds. But if you don't, then this thing is going to really gum up the works. And you don't have time for that kind of nonsense sometimes in modern. It's just too quick of a format right now. So I don't know if I'm feeling this one. Although Spore Frog also got reprinted in this set, and that's now modern legal. So I guess we got to get to brewing and see if we can make that work. Glacial Revelation. Okay, one of the awkward things about these snow cards is there's just not enough snow permanents out there to really matter in the world of modern, at least not yet. Although, we have a lot of set to see that could change, I suppose. And if it doesn't change now, in the future, I'm sure we will get this snow mechanic again at some point. Maybe that will be the tipping point. Who knows? This card is interesting, though, because it does something besides let you dig for snow permanents. It also dumps cards in the graveyard. Now, there's other efficient ways to do that in Modern. I don't think a deck necessarily needs this, but I don't know. Maybe as a redundancy, there might be a deck that might want to test out a copy or two of this just to populate the graveyard, and maybe they just happen to have a random snow card or two in that deck as well and could find some added value from this. This is a card at least worth considering for the future, if nothing else. Now, when it comes to the Commander, if you're trying to build that snow deck, here's another card for you. And in Limited, this is an uncommon, and it feels like there's enough snow permanence in the set for it to matter for Drafter Sealed. Mother Bear. Here's another bear for that commander build. It's a 2-2 for 2, of course, and also if it's in your graveyard, 2 green and 3. Exile it, and you get 2 2, two green bear creature tokens. You can only activate it, though, when you can use a sorcery, so you can't do it on the fly. But still, I think it's pretty good for limited purposes, especially considering this is a common. Like, this is a really nice value common to have for Drafter Sealed. Cloud Shredder Sliver. Great aggressive sliver here. If a modern sliver deck can get there, this will be a part of it. And even if that doesn't happen, you'll be happy to play this in your Commander Sliver decks or Casual decks. Also in Limited, this Boro Sliver archetype is coming together nicely. Now this is a rare, you're not going to see this all the time, but if you're lucky enough to open it and you can get yourself some slivers and stick to these colors, this will be great for you. Here's a Korean language preview, and it is a reprint, Altar of Dementia. This is from Tempest as well as Conspiracy. The Tempest copy, not cheap, it's going to run you $7 or $8. The Conspiracy copy, also $7 or $8. That Conspiracy Foil, about $17. So this card does add a little bit of value, definitely, to the set. Now in Commander, you can use this with, like, Sun Titan and Gift of Immortality, or there's other combos you can pull off with this, too. I don't know if any of the combos with this thing are streamlined enough for Modern, unless somebody can come up with some really economical combos that are consistent. Maybe in the future, when we get more cards into the format, something will come up. But at least right now, I'm not too confident about that. Maybe someone could look at this card, though, and try to build a variation on the mill deck. Again, I don't know how consistent that would be, but worth brewing. You don't know till you try, right? Also, this could be an avenue to mill yourself, which might be relevant. Mox Tantalite. Okay, this is it. It's a Mox. It's a Mythic. The artwork is beautiful. This has to be incredible, right? It's got to be. Tell me it's incredible. I'm reading the card. I'm not feeling like it's incredible. Okay, here's my issue with this thing. Suspend three on a Mox in Modern. I like Moxes, especially when they give me a man of any color, but do I have the time to wait for this? If I don't draw this in my opening hand, I might never see this Mox. Games in Modern are just too quick. If I get it in my opening hand by the time I get this Mox, it might be too late anyway. Now, if I want to ramp, if I want to color fix, I just feel like there's more reliable ways to do that quicker than this, and that's a problem. Now, maybe you could cheat this a little bit, cascade into it, or find another way to get it out. However, that's going to require time and setup too. And again, we're back to the same problem. Is it worth it at that point? I don't know. This just feels really rough to me. And I like the suspend mechanic. I always liked cards like Ancestral Vision and even Lotus Bloom, which I know didn't see tons of play. I still thought that that was a cool card that maybe I could work into some combo decks or something like that. This, it requires some testing. I don't want to give up on it yet, but I'm just not feeling it for the competitive formats. Commander, it's a good mana rock. I would play it there and be happy with it. Limited, draft your sealed. Yeah, you can get value. It might be a little slow, but by the time you get it, you're in a long, grindy game. It's just fine. It could give you a little advantage. Again, the color fixing and a little boost to your mana, nothing wrong with that, even if it occurs in the mid to late game. But modern, I just don't have a lot of faith in this one. 
This I thought was kind of cool. They talked a little bit today about what you can expect in the Modern Horizons booster packs. One thing that they said you would get would be, of course, your snow-covered land, and they did go on to say that when it comes to drafting, you would have to draft that because the snow mechanic, of course, is in the set. Secondly, you'd get a token, as always, but it's going to be a double-sided token. I thought that was cool. And finally, you're going to get one of these new art cards. On the left side of the screen, you're going to see a back and a front. You got my favorite mocks on the top left and the back of that card on the bottom left. Now, the back is mostly blank, so you could take that to an event, have the artist sign it. I thought that was cool. This is a really neat addition. I do think a lot of people are just going to want to collect these cards because they look really nice. And I can't wait to see them in person. All right, those are the cards for today. Tomorrow, we're going to be back. We're going to do it all over again. We're going to recap all the cards that come out over the next 24 hours. Saturday, we will do our episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch as we do every Saturday. There's a lot to talk about this week, as you can imagine. Until next time, though, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.